I'm back. Well, where have I been? <laughs> I've been waiting for some uh, Roland equipment that hasn't bothered to turn up, you know, that uh, Roland cube head. And that 300 series uh, guitar synthesizer, which uh, sounded really good at the time. My voice is going, ignore it. <laughs> uh, but it, that hasn't turned up either. So I went away and I, while I was at the Music Messer, I watched uh, Thomas Blue, or Blug, as they say in England. It's Blue, I think, pretty sure. And uh, he was using one of these things, a Blue, a, a blue guitar amp one, or Blug guitar amp one. I think it's a Blue guitar amp one. And uh, what this thing's about is it's a, it's a power amp that's no bigger than really the picture you see there. We're gonna get it out in a sec. And uh, it's got this micro tube or mini tube. I think it's a micro tube. Doesn't really matter the name, but it's it's a little tiny thing. Um, by God, it can get hot. Oh. So uh, let's get the thing out and take a closer look because this is a, a very interesting uh, product that uh, when Thomas uses it, uh, it's awesome. But it may or may not be awesome when me and you use it. So let's take a closer look. Well, the first thing you get is. Unfortunately, like me, you get the bill. Let's put that over there, eh? Yeah, let's put that over there. And then you get uh, something that's equally as useful. A foreign plug. Um, that's not really... It's great if you're in Germany, but... Listen, hey, this is England. Ingerland, as the Americans say. Um, the fact is that Foreign plugs are no use to me, and they're probably no use to you in America or, I don't know, Australia or Singapore. So, here's a plug I got earlier. Not a plug, no, a plug. <laughs> That's a plug for the plug, right? You need one of them, don't forget. Now lastly, believe it or not, you get a very nice box and an even nicer manual which, as you can expect, with Thomas, he's sort of Germanish, that area. It starts off in German. However, once you get about halfway through, you can see it translates itself to English, the rest of the world, which I like. Great manual, by the way. Simple, like me. <laughs> Let's put it back in there for now. Let's get rid of this bit. Now opening this box, it's a real nice carry handle, real nice uh, bit of gear that. Bear in mind you're not really paying for one of that. And out it comes, oh wrong way around. Mm. Let's pull this thing out. There you have it, really nice looking piece of gear. Or is it? Now the fact is that uh, this pedal's been around for a short while. Loads of guys have reviewed them, but they never quite review them in the way that, uh, that I like to see. And that is the inside and the outside. You know, let's see what you're getting for the money and the quality and things like that. It's a really nice uh, made unit. It's a nice aluminium top. Loader adjusters and things on, which we'll get to later. But one of the problems is that uh, if you zoom around the back, they very kindly sealed off where I can take a screwdriver and open this without ruining the warranty or having the warranty made void. Well, what does that tell you? I don't know. It tells you don't want to look inside. But you know what? I'm going to look inside anyway because I know it works. I tried it. So the first thing we're going to do is have a ganders behind that. Hold on. Warranty, sparranty. <laughs> well, there you go. Half a dozen screws. Break the seal. <laughs> the seventh seal, yeah. And uh, you can see inside. Now, there is a lot more on the underside of the board than there is on the outside of the board. Now, you can strip it all down. I just want to get to see what the thing's like uh, generally inside regarding manufacture. So let's zoom in a bit close, as we often do, and uh, take a quick look. Yeah. 
good idea. Well, here we are. Unfortunately, most of the uh, the real business is going on on the other side of this this little board. Well, this big board <laughs> here, which is a real pity because uh, I don't like to have seen the other side. But you can tell a lot from the build uh, from this side as well, this side of the board. Uh, well, first of all, you've got your your power in up at the top. In fact, that's it. So I guess really this is more of a power supply area. And the most important thing, of course, is this little micro tube that sits here. Oh, by the way, this isn't a pencil, as some people point out. If it was a pencil, it'd be good. Not. It's a. Uh, it's a piece of. Uh, well, a piece of wood. Let's move on. Uh, so you've got this micro tube, and it really is a tube. Uh, you know, people might think that. Oh, it's another one of them highfalutin uh, type of things that's made up of transistors and things and uh, you know they put it in a tube case like the Roman things probably gonna be uh, but that's not the case this is indeed a real tube now looking at the board itself uh, here are all your little controls down the side you can see like little tiny potentiometers in fact the whole thing's quite nice it's got loads of stuff everywhere these don't look as high quality as it could be, but I don't know. We'll see over time, won't we? And everything else looks uh, hunky-dory. You can see the quality of the soldering down here. I have to zoom in a bit. And there he is. Ooh. And there's the tube. You can see the soldering's not actually that bad. You can see on this board that, as I said, generally the quality's uh, quite nice and uh, nothing to be sniffed at. See? All pretty, pretty cool, really. I don't see anything that's uh, nasty or, you know, really nasty. <laughs> like some of the amps that uh, I've looked at that have been generally foreign amps and uh, quality wasn't so great. But on this, it don't look too bad. And as I said, you've got that all-important tube We've got to call it that, I guess. Yeah, awesome. Let's uh, flip the lid back, because I've seen enough in here. This is quite nice quality. There's not a lot to talk about unless I strip the whole thing down. I'm not going to do that. Oh, one last thing. It's got a really nice fan over the power supply. There's a little fan there. That's about it. Let's zoom out. Okay, well, here we are around the front of the blue guitar. Oh, yeah, blue guitar. Yeah, call me what you will. Taking a close look at it, uh, it looks rather like an amp, doesn't it? I mean, you've got the volume, gain, on your overdrive and a master. You've got these three channels. You've got a, well, you've got almost four channels. You've got a clean, vintage, classic and modern. Yeah, I suppose it is four channels. Yeah. <laughs> Bass, metal and treble, uh, which are shared, by the way. Uh, so they are what they are. You've got a reverb, which is not bad either and an overall master up here. And of course that nano tube, I called it a micro tube, well, I'll call it a nano tube now, or a nanny tube if it's not very, <laughs> not very big. And uh, there it is, claims to be 100 watt. I suspect there's probably more to it than that driving 100 watts out, probably uh, transistor driven. I couldn't get close enough. Well, I couldn't get close enough that is to uh, See every last nut and bolt of what's inside it. What a pity. Nevertheless, let's get on. As I said, now nice aluminium case. You've got a uh, pile of things across the top. You've got a load of things. You've got your on off, foot switch, 8 ohm or 16 ohm speaker, a record out or headphones, it says there. Very nice. And you've got a send and return uh, loop. And of course, the, uh, the guitar input over here. Nice and simple. What do you expect? Now on these switches, uh, you've got your regular channel, and if you press it, it switches it into whichever boost channel you've got up here. Nice and easy, I guess. And uh, well, I say boost channel, it's almost like another amp channel, because there's a boost. Uh, this will take it up uh, oh, quite a way, in fact, the, the boost does. Quite useful if you're throwing it off into the lead guitar. Uh, but the, the, the amp itself uh, covers a whole range of uh, sounds, which I liked, uh, something a bit different, you know. 
rather than uh, flat out or nothing. There's, there's so much, uh, I don't know, sound sculpture in there, man. It's, uh, it's awesome. Let's go and see uh, what's around the sides and uh, around the back. Now this is a sort of major control that uh, sits around the uh, left hand side edge. Um, this is where you can make your other adjustments to fine tune this amplifier into exactly what you want. Uh, what we've got uh, from left to right here, it's all pretty obvious if you read the writing, but we'll run through it anyway. This is the control for your boost, the amount of boost that uh, comes on that pedal on the front, that middle one. Uh, you get a volume uh, and a tone for the modern, a volume and a tone for the classic, and a clean tone. Actually, when I tried the uh, modern tone, well, it wasn't as effective as I thought it could have been, but uh, it did work. I mean, it's just a comment. Moving across, we can have the, the FX loop that's around the back in either serial or parallel. Well, it's probably going to reside in serial for the most part, I guess. Oh, and by the way, there's a noise gate in this unit. And we can have it on as uh, soft, metal or off. Now, there are no real other adjustments for the noise gate. Uh, you know, that's what you get. But I can tell you, it, it does work exceedingly well. Uh, so don't worry about that. It's, uh, it's really quite a good noise gate. One of the things I always like to see on any uh, device is uh, multi-voltage because I think the people that don't do the multi-voltage thing are cheapskates or they're trying to protect the sectors of uh, the world for price fixing. But anyway, this one, uh, it's 100 to 240 volts, so what's great about it, you can buy it anywhere in the world and the other thing is you can probably take it anywhere in the world too, which is uh, really nice. Anyway, you've got this fan on the left here, which looks after the power supply. That's what that's for. That's not for the tube at all, like uh, some people might think it is. You've got an on and off switch. The obvious things. It says here MIDI uh, remote. We'll come back to that later. You've got an 8 ohm and 16 ohm. We looked at these across the top, but I just thought I'd show you the back. Record out, FX, uh, send and return, and obviously the, the guitar input. Let's move on. Now here's a quick shot of the back and um, one of the things you want to take heed of are these two things here because what you can get uh, for, your, for your sort of floorboard uh, unit is you can get this sort of magnet that fits in that so you can just fit this into the magnet so to speak or on, onto the board that's got the magnet and there it is stuck in place a uh, very simple innovative idea really and uh, it's covered in the manual a bit more but I ain't got one, so I'm not going to show you physically. Let's zoom in a, a little bit nearer and have a look what else we've got up here. A few more things kicking around. Okay, well, you can see that it has a CE M1 and a Rush compliance, which is to do with lead and solder and things like that. Or solder, as they say in America. I don't know. <laughs> That's a funny word for America. Anyway, uh, Looking on, you've got your little serial number. All these other things saying, oh, there's high voltage inside, keep out and all that rubbish. And uh, the guarantee Siegel, which is now a bit of the dust. Who cares? I'll put a new one on it. <laughs> oh, so how effective is that? Well, it isn't. <laughs> and if we move across a bit, we've got this other thing. I assume you're not going to reach it. Yeah, I can. And there it is. Well, this is the FX loop level right there but it doesn't work on like a you know it's not variable you can't sort of turn it round so to speak it works on in or out so what happens is you just press in there when it's out it's low minus 10 db that's the non-commercial stuff and when it's in it's high and it's plus 4 db which is nice that you can vary it in that way let's zoom back out I wanted to talk a little bit more about the uh, the nanotube. There it is, microtube, nanotube, Mori Scori. Yeah. Anyway, what they say in the manual, I flip the pages open because I don't know much about uh, nanotubes. It says here, for decades, tubes have been the sound makers. They're dead right. They are. Uh, the sub-miniature vacuum tubes 
were reduced in terms of size and weight and consequently more mechanically stable, noticeably more resistant to microponics. Well, yeah, there they are. There it is, should I say. I only see one inside. Uh, maybe there is just one uh, used as a preamp and then they maybe use a, uh, you know, uh, solid state output for the power amp. I suspect that's the case because, uh, well, you can actually turn this on with no speakers. So, I guess if it was a tube amp, it wouldn't last long. And if it was a uh, solid state amp, well, yeah, there you go. Well, the only thing that ever concerned me about the, the nano tube, really, uh, this tiny little device down here, was, well, what's going to happen when your tube fails? And they've got a little section in the manual about that. And it says quite clearly here, the nano tubes tube is Russian creation, which among other things is used in the aerospace and aviation industries. The specification requires 90% of all nanotubes to have triple, and li triple the lifespan of a standard ECC83. And they last a long time. Well, they do in my experience. I've never had one fail. In addition, AMP1 uses the nanotubes at a slightly lower operating voltage, doubling the lifespan again. So the theory is that's going to last a long time. Very long time. The only problem is, if it does fail, can you get the spares? It doesn't tell you that. <laughs> in fact, it tells you nothing about nothing. I guess if you go and fish, and they are in aerospace, and they are in these places where everyone says, well, then uh, you could probably repair this uh, amplifier should that tube, I think it's a preamp tube, fail. Uh, this guarantees nanotube, it says here, an extremely long lifespan, and for this reason it's constructed without a socket. It should even outlive you. Well, it might outlive me the way I'm going, but uh, will it outlive you 17-year-olds? Well, who knows? By the time you get to 65, give them a call. <laughs> a few interesting little tips on the master here. What they're saying when it's at 12 o'clock, that's equal to 30 watts. Well, you saw where it was. I was playing out in the studio earlier. About there. Uh, so that looks about, uh, I don't know, 20 watts. But anyway, that's 30. That's about 50. That there's about 70. And if you crank it all the way around, that's about 70. And if you crank it all the way around to there, it's 100. So very interesting. What it's saying is, let's keep it in this area backwards for home. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Oh, well, anywhere in that sector. Yeah. That sector, it's hard to do that on camera in that sector, and then once you move to uh, stage, this sector around here, and then when we move into the arenas, as you guys do by by the roast every night, <laughs> we push it around there. Well, I'm not sure about the arenas, uh, <laughs> there are some people that play them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know any. Well, actually, I know one or two, but not many. Yeah. So the arenas thing is a bit, uh, yeah, nice if you get that. Now I hooked into this thing on this uh, this recording out. There is a speaker emulation, uh, so you can go into desk and then, uh, well, you know, push it through the PA, I guess, or push it into the desk to record. They don't tell you much. Well, they don't tell you almost anything about the, uh, you know, that emulation what cabs it is, what this it is, what that it isn't. So I wouldn't worry about that. You'll, you'll put it to your desk and you'll either like it or you won't. <laughs> That's that simple. And if you don't like it, uh, well, it's tough. <laughs> oh, and one other thing, when you do use, uh, you do use your headphones here in this record out thing, it disables the, uh, the speaker uh, outs, it says. Let's just digress for a moment and talk about that MIDI. If you checked at the back earlier on, you'd see that, uh, that MIDI out uh, where is it? There. Call it a foot switch. Right there. Uh, it's a non-standard MIDI connection. So they do make it like a converter that converts it to a regular sort of, uh, I think it's a 5 pin, from a stereo 6.3 mil jack or quarter jack. Now the thing is about that, uh, inside here You've got a power soak, but the power soak you can't get at unless you've got the uh, either the remote one 
I think they call it a remote one, uh, to switch it on and off. So that's fun. Uh, and the second thing is, well, you can do things with MIDI. I guess maybe you can get at it that way uh, with this converter. But I haven't seen anywhere where you can do that. Remote one's nice. Can't cost you money, of course. Maybe you can get at the, uh, the power soap. Maybe you can't. I'll investigate that a bit further. One last thing on the uh, on the foot switch. You can use one of those uh, sort of two button, uh, you know, cheapo switches uh, in this foot switch section. Uh, it's not programmable, but it'll switch a couple of things. On the remote one, you also have the ability to buy a, a sort of looper board that fits in, in, inside the remote one. And uh, basically, you, could, you then got a looper. Uh, which is quite nice. And, and, and there's loads of other things you can do with the remote one. There's not so many things you can do without the remote one because I don't see any MIDI information, or just very little bits of information about MIDI in the manual. So, so really, there's either going to be more hidden somewhere on the internet or you can't do it simply. I don't know. I like the simple route, don't you? I want to just cover a little bit more about that power soap because for some people it's extremely important to get great sounds at low volumes and uh, you know the sort of price that this this amplifier is uh, that's a very important thing uh, well how does it kick itself together well you need to have the uh, blue guitar uh, remote one and if you look at this master here let's figure that out as being halfway between here or there here is home there is stage. Now when it's set in the in the home mode, we've got down here we've got literally 0.15 watt tiny. Moving on up a bit, one watt, one and a half watt, and finally two watt. If we carry on from there, we're on 7 watt, 7 watt on the stage section when you flip it into stage because it's a two level uh, power soap. Then we move to 20 watt, 40 watt and all the way back to 100 watt. So home from 150 milliwatts to 2 watts, stage from 7 to 100 watts. Well, very nice. But you did need the remote to do it. One of the things I do like about the uh, effects send and return, if you bang uh, one of those uh, volume pedals between the send and return, you can control the output volume. Uh, very nice. Uh, it's almost like uh, what I use on the racks uh, that I've got. Uh, you know, you just have a nice volume pedal and you can turn your volume off while you do this or do that and crank it back up and yeah, it's great. Well, let's think about the channels a bit more. When we're on this clean channel, basically you've got what they say at least is that uh, you can use this sort of up to about, uh, well you can use it anywhere really, but humbuckers this side, single coils more that side, or level should I say. And don't forget you've got that adjustment on the side, and the adjustment on the side here actually they're all very important because they they sort of shape this front end and uh, on the clean channel you can go from it says here california to sparkling very nice yeah sounds like uh, sounds like a drink yeah mm, yummy yummy but Anyway, the clean channel is what it is, but you can drive it quite a long way. And, uh, you know, if you've got using that power soak as well, you can drive it even further, of course. Uh, you know, uh, from very light, very clean, into uh, quite heavy stuff. Yeah, always remember that when you're working on these channels, that these, these settings down the side, uh, they're really ultra important, because what they allow you to do is to in effect, uh, custom set each one of these uh, styles, we'll call them that, they could be called channels, vintage, classic and modern, and uh, really get to grips with an exact tone that you need.
and uh, I don't know, maybe I should have had a look at Thomas's uh, pedal when I was there and photographed the side. I just never forgot. To do. I just didn't quite do that. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have photographed the side uh, of Thomas's uh, blog guitar or blue guitar uh, pedal. I just failed to do that. Sorry, guys. I'll see if I've got a thing on the settings that he used. Maybe not. But you can take this vintage channel and you can tweak it around down the side here and it will go from uh, clean to drive it says here combined with the boost on the custom control and the power soak that you can't get at without the pedal and all that. Uh, it says here the vintage channel delivers a good old honest tone of rock and roll. Well, I hope it does. Like we distorted between 5 and 7 for single coils if using high output pickups. Like humbuckers or active pickups you should test uh, settings between three and five. If you push the gain past seven, you will produce beautifully fat crunch. Yeah, if they met the message then. Oh. <laughs> Onto the classic channel. There it is. Nothing classic about me, is there? But this is supposed to be really classic. And it goes from 70s rock, from uh, down one end, uh, on the side here, to 80s rock, to modern rock and metal, it says. Using classic tone, you can dial in this channel to your personal taste or anything between the woody, rough-sounding tones of the 70s and the rich, modern sounds of hot, roddy amps. I spent too long on all this. We'll come back up top in a minute. On to the modern channel. Well, there it is, and you've got your adjusters and the rest of it, and these things at the side again, these custom controls. It's saying here, you can go from fat screaming classically to high gain rock and metal to ultra metal. Well, maybe you can. Uh, didn't impress me particularly as being ultra metal, uh, although it does get it. It gets a good way towards it, but I, I wouldn't call it that myself. But that's just me. Now on these uh, bass, middle, and treble, when you've got shared uh, uh, controls like that. Uh, what normally happens in an amp is that all the channels sound pretty much well, like that. <laughs> but what they've done with this is, it's a bit like, uh, to be honest, it's a bit like an Electrodyne in some ways. Uh, what they've done is for each channel, these settings or the knobs behind them are effectively different. So uh, they're sort of tuned for each channel. Although you've only got three knobs, the, you, you know, some guys will say, oh, that's it, it's, that's, it's all fixed, and it's all this, and it's all that. No, it, no it's not. Uh, these effectively change when you change channel, and then uh, you can make your adjustments from there. But I guess once you get it right on one, they're gonna be pretty right on the others. Boost here. Uh, well, you've got an adjuster on the end for the boost. Uh, which is quite useful, can go from, it says here, from clean to drive, Doesn't that's about it. But it does say uh, you can activate the boost with a, this switch here, or with a double foot switch, you know, those cheap things on the uh, foot switch bit, or via MIDI and Remote 1. Now, MIDI and Remote 1, I'm not sure if that's MIDI or Remote 1, or MIDI and Remote 1. If it's MIDI and Remote 1, you need the Remote 1. There's also a noise gate in this unit uh, that you don't see much about uh, because there are no adjusters on this uh, other than at the side here uh, for the uh, either off, soft or metal settings uh, for that noise gate. But I like the noise gate. It seemed to be uh, quite cool, that did. Digital reverb. What did you expect? <laughs> One last thing about this before I zoom back up to the top. Uh, I noticed in the back of the manual that the manufacturer, Blue Guitar GmbH, or Blue Guitar Germany, is actually based at a, a university campus. Uh, all interesting stuff. So uh, maybe they're a sort of startup company or not. I, I'm not quite sure about that, but just interesting to note that they're actually on campus. Well, hey, how are we doing on the score of this thing? Uh, it's quite a nice... Uh, piece of equipment and uh, I'd rate it at about uh, about an 8 actually. It seems very nicely made and uh, worth the money so to speak. Inside's well enough made. It all comes down whether you like 
two bumps, whether you like a hybrid, like what this is, or whether you like transistor amps, or simulators, or emulators. For me, this is a bit like, uh, uh, you know, a silicon type of power amp with a, a preamp that's got a tube in that does introduce tube distortion, although it's preamp tube distortion, not power amp tube distortion. Now I know that they've got emulator, simulator, whatever they want to call it inside, but you know, some of those uh, type of products uh, are not that great. This one sounds okay, it's, it's quite acceptable, uh, but is it exactly like a tube amp? I'd say no it isn't, but it, it's still pretty good for what you get and what you pay. Uh, so this one gets an 8 and uh, I think it's worth uh, worth what you pay. Now then, it's all good. Rock and roll. Now there's not much left to say on this one really, except to go and plug it in out there. And uh, you can hear it for yourself and I'll play a few chords. Some guys said, oh hey, yeah, you don't play any chords. Well, sort of. So I'll play a few chords and then play something else. Why not? That's the name of the game. Uh, so don't forget to go to uh, www.turningmackenzie.com which is being updated by the way. That's just something I wanted to talk about. Yeah, it'll probably be two or three months before you see my new website uh, but it'll have all the old stuff on and hopefully some new stuff but time is a factor. Uh, so the website's going to get a massive uh, change and uh, the old one's been very good but the new one's even gooder or better. Gooder, yeah, that's what's the word. <laughs> and uh, also my channel, www.youtube.com slash Tony McKenzie com without the dot. And you can get to the channel. It's about 160 plus videos on there of all sorts of things. Anyway, enough about me. Uh, here it comes. Good to see you all again. And uh, let's hope I can get hold of some more equipment uh, these people don't want to send. <laughs> I'm paying for it, but they still don't want to sell it me. Yeah, some rumor about Roland selling out to uh, an American company. I don't know. Maybe that's just all hearsay. Till next time, rock and roll. <laughs>